This week, OpenAI eclipsing XAI in the fundraising race in artificial intelligence, raising $6.6 billion, surpassing the $6 billion that was just raised by Elon Musk's XAI back in May. Joining us right now to discuss what is turning out to be quite the AI tech race and so much more is Walter Isaacson. He is the author of Elon Musk. He's also a Perla Weinberg advisor, partner, a Tulane professor, and importantly, a CNBC contributor. It's nice to see you. And friend of Andrew. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and I'm hey, very happy to say. And Becky. And, uh, <laughs> friend of Squawks. Friend of Bill. Um, Walter, what do you make of this, this race? Where you see OpenAI, which seems to be mm -hmm. clearly, I think, in the lead relative to everybody else, but you may think that everybody's uh, very, very close to each other. And then XAI, which, by the way, at least by my eyes, has actually caught up uh, or gotten very close very, very quickly. Yes, XAI has caught up very much, and I saw Musk and Sam Altman together about a week ago. And there's, of course, a little bit of, I mean, a large bit of tension that right. goes back four or five years when they both started OpenAI, and now Sam is taking OpenAI and making it no longer open and no longer not for profit. And also telling people, if you invest in us, we don't want you to invest, invest in, in others. others. What will be interesting is the, flip, uh, the script getting flipped a bit uh, next week, October 10th, when Elon introduces robo-taxi and things that operate in the real world. When Musk bought Twitter, he got this huge data feed of a right. billion tweets a day. When he has Tesla, he has a billion frames from cars mm -hmm. every day. That's the data. The big thing you need is the data set to train on, and the big next leap is real-world AI, cars that drive themselves, robots that walk. Well, well, one of the questions becomes how XAI is going to be integrated or not right. into the development efforts of these other products. And so let me tell you one thing about Tesla, Elon Musk is that right, he the, tries to integrate everything. He's not going to set up walls and silos, even though some, you know, Tesla's publicly traded, XAI well, that's what, But that's what I was going to ask. So there's going to be an investor class that's in XAI, right. as we know. There's an investor class that's in Tesla. There's another investor class that's in SpaceX. Look, when he took over Twitter, he brought engineers from Tesla and other companies to help build the AI right. there. He blurs those lines. Plus, he even has Neuralink, the company right. that's implanting chips in the brain. So if you're wondering, is he going to bring all these things together, my guess right. is, my guess, Can my I answer is yes. a question about just the, the ability for him to advance as quickly as he has? I mean, literally, there was no... Yeah. Uh, true AI effort in terms of inside XAI uh, that didn't exist right. well, a year ago. I right? remember he, I mean, and, called me to, uh, you know, Austin, Texas, and sitting in the back of, uh, by a swimming pool in a house somebody had rented, he's telling me, I'm going to start from scratch an AI right. company because I don't trust so, Sam Altman. So how much, though, does, is this a business that is just a function of processing power? If you have enough money mm -hmm. to buy enough chips and you can get NVIDIA to give them to you or to sell them to you that you can be not just a player in this game but be one of the top tier players. How much is it that versus the alchemy, the sort of software talent, the engineering talent to be able to write algorithms and how is it possible that in a year or less this group has managed to do it while Google which was clearly at the uh, you know, they were the, the vanguard of all of this at the beginning. And I actually think inside Google, they have all of the, the, yeah. the same type of talents, but I don't know if they have struggled to productize it or what's happened here, but it looks very different. Yeah, and Google, you have Google DeepMind. Uh, they do Gemini. And it's Demis Hassabis, who is, in my opinion, the greatest mind at the moment looking at AI. Mm -hmm. But you're right. At the moment, Gemini is not uh, racing ahead of Anthropic or XAI or OpenAI. I think that part of it is Musk was very smart and good at getting NVIDIA chips, getting CPUs. That's one of the gating factors. He's creating his own chip, which is taking a longer time, a Dojo chip, which right. is going to do visual data. So I th And once again, you saw that blurring of the lines. He was getting some right. of the NVIDIA chips for, right. I think, Tesla, and then he was moving it to XAI. But his plan is not to be open either, by the way. No, no. Right? Uh, so no. this whole idea of, you know, he can be frustrated or upset that he thinks that open AI is not open, Nobody but he's building his own closed system, too. of total consistency. <laughs> what? 
Is it is it about who controls it? And do you have more faith in you know, Musk look, controlling it? You know, look, I mean, from a very elevated perspective, having watched Musk very up close for a couple of years, I'm going to say something that you might think is naive, but I really believe it, which is he has certain missions he's had his whole life. He read that. Isaac Asimov. Yeah, he read that. the robot I series. He thought the robots might turn on us. I have to come in and save us from hostile AI. I have to make us multi-planetary. Do you think he will? I, I believe you 100% on his idea of a mission. I, I think that's who he I is. always think after, you know, at the very beginning, I think, man, this is definitely going to be starting an AI company, mm -hmm. buying Twitter. No, I just mean, do you believe him? Do you think AI is safer in his hands than in Sam Altman's hands? I, I don't, uh, no, I don't know. I wouldn't make that judgment. I'm sorry not to give you a snap answer here, but that's a, yeah. It's, it's a compl I, complex question. Here's the real question of what he believes versus others, is that the more AIs you have, does that make it safer? If there's 12 companies, 20 companies doing competing AIs, does that make it safer? Or is it better to be concentrated in the hands of a few, like so Google, he's like OpenAI, <laughs> How many and do Musk you believes the more is the merrier because they'll check how each many other. Ultimately that's actually do you, a, uh, that's very a very important point. That's a very important point. Yeah. That how was an early you, thing on the horizon. How many do you think like, there ultimately will be? Because there's some arguments we made there's going to be a lot of smaller language models. Mm -hmm. But these, these sort of front, what they call frontier models, these, yeah. these sort of large Big language one. models that cost a fortune to run. Yeah. At some point, don't you think that they will either get merged or people will say, look, we'll take all that processing power and yeah. put it towards this or, or what? If so we're going to be down to two or three in the end? Or do you think this is a five or six or seven player race. I think it's a three or four, and I think you're right. There's certain natural factors that mean you need enormous amounts of electricity. Microsoft right. trying to open Three Mile Island nuclear plant again. You need enormous amounts of CPUs, things like that. So, you know, my brother in New Orleans who wants to start a local, he's never going to be able to do that. So there's a natural concentration.